What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and as promised, a little bit later than I wanted, here is your Dungeon Master screen review for Curse of Strahd. We just recently did, uh, so far I've done them all, I've done the initial uh, Wizards of the Coast one, Tyranny of Dragons, Elemental Evil, just recently, not that long ago, I did a, uh, a review of the uh, Out of the Abyss, the Rage of Demons one, now we're going to do Curse of Strahd. So, um, as you, if you watched any of the reviews, you know my typical feeling on these Gale Force 9 uh, Dungeon Master screens is they're not really worth it with Out of the Abyss being the exception because it did seem to cover, uh, there being a lot of mechanics in Out of the Abyss, it being an Underdark themed uh, campaign. So, this screen is the perfect companion for those Dungeon Masters running Curse of Strahd Adventure, or the Curse of Strahd Adventure or any trek through Barovia. The front includes contrasting images of Count Strahd von Zar uh, Zarovich, sorry, uh, while the back provides maps of Castle Ravenloft and surrounding Barovia, as well as random encounter tables for both. So, let's look at the art. We've got Strahd and his very Castlevania-like on uh, his throne, very Dracula. And we have um, this NPC whose name I forget, uh, fighting off some wolves. Then the inside here we have Strahd, uh, Raven, and Madam Eva. Eva. Uh, it's actually uh, her on both sides, and it's got Taraka deck cards I'll show it to you guys in a sec. And then Humanized Strahd and Vampire Strahd. So, what do we got on the inside? Uh, I'm thinking we're going to have to default back to my... Um, Granted, Barovia does have, and Ravenloft and stuff, does have a lot of very intricate mechanics. Not to the extent of something like the campaign in the Underdark, especially the way Out of the Abyss is written. This is one of those super specific, because this is literally just the maps. And all of these maps are in the back of Curse of Strahd, which I think I have my copy of Curse of Strahd right here. So let's take a look. Um, right here, oh, it's not in here, it must have come out the back. Well, there's the insert that goes in the back of Curse of Strahd that has the maps. Um, and it's like the big unfoldable map of all of Barovia. Uh, which is really cool that it's included in the book, but they also doubled it up inside the screen. So this right here, these two full panels, this is just Castle Ravenloft. So you've got, let's see, uh, Court of the Count, the main floor, the different towers. This is a, a intricate trap that happens in an elevator. Uh, the spires, this is the key to tell you what's a door, what, what um, door, traps, etc. Uh, the Rooms of Weeping, the Larders of Ill Omen, and the dungeons and the catacombs. So this is just the map of the castle itself. I believe there's no more. Correct. So then, over here on this side, we have some tables. Uh, random encounters. The first time the character enters the castle area and isn't otherwise occupied, check for a random encounter. Also check for a random encounter every 10 minutes the characters spend resting in the castle. In most circumstances, a random encounter occurs on a roll of 18 or higher on a d20. To determine what the characters encounter, consult the table below. And there's this table. Um, and it has the pages listed for you to reference, which I do like to have gotten better with that, listing the pages to reference in the actual uh, campaign book. Uh, again, it's only on an 18 or higher, though, on a random encounter. But they do want you to roll every 10 minutes, so I guess that's all right, because if it was lower than that and you were rolling every 10 minutes, you literally have random encounters all the time. You'd never be able to get even a, a short rest. So, you can encounter several of the NPCs. I'm not going to go through all of this. You're rolling a d12 plus a d8. I don't know why they went that way. I guess minimum two, but you could... That seems to be their general random encounter generation in 5th edition is a d12 plus a d8. Maybe it's just so you can get some use out of your d12. Uh, Black Cat. Uh, broom of Animated Attack. Flying Swords. Uh, broom of Animated Attack is basically a flying sword that does bludgeoning damage. Flying Swords, a Blinksy Toy, Unseen Servant, Barovian Commoners, Crawling Claws, Shadows, Swarm of Bats, Astrad Zombie, Mistami Thugs, Whites, Trinket, 
giant spider cocoon, a Barovian witch, a vampire spawn, and a 20 is Strahd. You could encounter Strahd much earlier on. Uh, it's probably more of like your typical... Um, and again, this is partially because I, I, one I don't want to spoil, and two I'm not too knowledgeable about Curse of Strahd because I really want to play in it, so I don't want to read it, but I ha kind of have to read it to give like my thoughts on it. Um, point of fact, if you want to watch profession professionals play, uh, you can watch Chris Perkins DM Dice Camera Action on uh, Tuesday nights uh, with Pro Jared, and Nate Wants to Battle, and a handful of others. Um, they're playing through it right now. But I'm guessing it's more of a like a mini boss or like the main boss appears to taunt you and then disappears kind of a thing. Uh, so that's that. And then over here we have the map of Barovia itself, which again, this map is also on that fold out piece of paper that comes out of the back of the book. And I believe those are and, I, and someone commented and I'm sorry, I don't have your name that that, that it is the PDFs of those are available on Wizards of the Coast's website. Um, you can see there is a bunch of little letters, all these little like dots that you see, these circular areas. Those are all letters, and it uh, they all pertain to this table right here, which you can't really see. This table um, is the random or as Barovia locations. So it's the list of all the locations, and then the list of the page numbers that those all pertain to. Uh, then you have this one I do like down here. Barovian names, if you need to come up with names of commoners, especially if one of the random encounters is just like 1d4 uh, commoners, this is pretty good for that. And I'm sorry that there's uh, Facebook notifications going off in the background. We're going to get rid of that. Um, so, then you have random encounter table right here. I'll read that. Dangers abound in the land of Barovia. Check for a random encounter after every 30 minutes the adventure is spent on the road or in the wilderness. Don't check if they've already had two random encounters in the past 12 hours. Outdoors in the past 12 hours. If the character's on the road, an encounter occurs on a roll of 18 or higher on a d20. If the character's in the wilderness, an encounter occurs on, oh, on a 15 or higher. So it's it's that's nice that they did increase it. Uh, if the encounter occurs, roll on the daytime table, which is this one, or the nighttime table here, depending on the time of day. Or have Strahd's uh, spies appear, if there's a sidebar. Uh, see the Strahd's spies sidebar, which is not, again, one of those things where they reference something, but it's just like a sidebar. You probably could have found a place to put it on the screen, but it's in the book. Um, so, yeah, it's daytime encounters, commoners, scouts, traps, graves, false trails, bandits, skeletal rider, trinket, hidden bundle, swarms, or a were raven interesting in raven form uh dire wolves wolves berserkers corpse werewolves in human form druid with twig blights needle blights scarecrows or a revenant nighttime is a ghost a hunting trap a grave trinket corpse hidden bundle skeletal rider swarm of bats dire wolves wolves berserkers druid with twig blights needle blights werewolves in wolf form zombies scarecrows strahd zombies will-o'-the-wisps and revenants and then again um, you've got fe male names, female names, and family names down here for your Strahd or your Barovian names. Um, I do like these. If you're playing a kind of a gothic type character or in a horror campaign, or even in general, some of these might just be cool, like Mirabelle. I don't know why, but I like that name. Fairy tale. That's why I like that name. Uh, <laughs> Balthazar, Mimir, Oleg. Uh, it's got a very, I mean, it's Barovia, so it's very Russian. Um, but Russian last names are always fun to say, so you can always, uh, look for stuff in here. Um, but then things that you would normally think, uh, kind of Eastern European-y, Ivan, Hans, uh, Katarina, things like that, so. Um, that is nice, though, because names, I find, in my personal opinion, and I'd love to hear what you guys think, names are always the hardest part for me, especially to come up with on the fly, because I'll just, like, stagnate thinking, like, uh... Uh, then start trying to pick a name that rhymes with somebody else's name because that's like the first thing I can think of or do what I do and accidentally start putting the player characters names in the game and then you have to deal with the awkwardness that is that uh, but anyway guys that was my review of the Curse of Strahd Dungeon Master screen uh, this one again super specific most of these again they are designed to be specific to the campaign uh, but at least some of the other ones that had, you know, 
the uh, the conditions and things that you would encounter could double as a generic screen. Uh, more often than not, as I say every time, you're better off just going with the base Dungeons and Dragons one. You're going to get a lot more useful information that you most likely will use every game in that screen. This one is specific to Barovia, but again, I'd say two out of three panels in here are covered on the removable fold-out paper map that they have, or you can get in PDF form. So make your call. What do you think? Is this worth this? Are you playing with this? Are you running Curse of Strahd? Do you find you're using this more? Is this that much more convenient than using the the um, the, the tanned out in the back of the book? Or is it just a waste of $15? Let me know what you think. Hey guys, uh, be on the lookout. I have a lot more videos planned. I know I've been talking about them for a while, but I will have those coming out. Also some new non-D&D video game related stuff coming out of PAX along with some code giveaways and things like that. So, hope you guys have a great week, and I'm sorry the D&D update isn't out yet. I'm just going to combine these past two weeks. PAX was crazy, and I couldn't just, I couldn't get one going before I left for the weekend. So, anyway guys, see you next time.